old. I'm Amelia and I'm five years old. Hi, I'm Joshe and I'm seven years old. Hey, this is Mommy. What's up, everyone? I'm Daddy. And you're listening to It's Movie Night. And this week we watched The Parent Trap. Walt Disney Pictures put out this remake in 1998. It's rated PG and has a runtime of two hours and seven minutes. Some other films Disney put out around this time were Mulan and I'll Be Home for Christmas. Girls, what would you say this movie's about? Two girls that go to camp and then find out that they're twins. Yes, how about you, Amelia? The girls switch places because one of them wants to see their dad for the first time and one of them wants to see their mom for the first time. That's exactly what this movie is about. This movie is about Annie and Hallie, two identical twins who are separated when they were babies, and they meet at summer camp 11 years later. Together, they devise a plan to switch places with Allie going to California to meet her dad for the first time, and Hallie going to London to meet her mother for the first time. Some familiar faces, Hallie slash Annie Parker is played by Lindsay Lohan. This is actually her first movie ever, which is crazy to think about because we know her very well at this point in (laughs) our lives. But she has also played Anna Coleman in Freaky Friday, Maggie Payton from Herbie Fully Loaded, and Parents, this is a little bit more of a grown-up movie, you know her as Katie Heron from Mean Girls. You mean Caddy Heron. Nick Parker is played by Dennis Quaid, probably one of the best smiles in Hollywood. Absolutely. He is the voice of Jager Clade in Strange World. He plays Frank Beardsley in Yours, Mine, and Ours, another favorite from my childhood. And parents, you'll know him as Jack Hall from The Day After Tomorrow. Now we're going to mention a few more people from this movie. However, they haven't done anything kid-friendly, but we figured they were at least worth mentioning for parents. Elizabeth James is played by the late Natasha Richardson. She is Carolyn Lane in Made in Manhattan, and I know her as Liam Neeson's wife, honestly. Yeah. Meredith Blake is Elaine Hendricks, who plays one of the mean girls, Lisa, from Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. And the last character I want to mention, who I think is the most recognizable for us, is Marva Culp Jr., who is a camp counselor played by Maggie Wheeler, who is none other than Janice from Friends. I never knew that it was her. Every time I seen in this movie, I had never known that that was Janice. And I love Friends. So it kind of blows my mind that I never knew this. See, I knew it immediately because around the time that this movie came out, we were still watching Friends live like my parents were on TV. Yeah. So instantly I was like, I know her. Oh, my God. When you saw it. <laughs> I, I thought it was weird to hear her speak normal. It <laughs> oh, was yeah, crazy. Sure. That was the thing that got me. I was like, oh, so she doesn't really talk like that. <laughs> And the director of this movie is Nancy Myers. She's only really done grown-up movies. She directed The Intern with Anne Hathaway a few years back, Something's Gotta Give, and What Women Want, one that I know Mommy and I really liked as kids, even though it wasn't made for kids. It was not, but still, the music in that movie is wonderful as well. And then she wrote a series that Mommy and I love. She wrote the movies Father of the Bride 1 and 2. Fantastic movies. So Mommy, like you had said, this movie came out in 1998. Do you know how old you were the first time you saw it, and did you like it? Yes, I saw this movie almost immediately after coming out. I believe it was on home video, so by that point, I might have still been six, possibly seven, and I loved it. Mm -hmm. Between Maggie, Betty, and myself, my next-door neighbors who, you know, you play with your neighbors all the time Mm -hmm. when you're kids, this was a movie that if it was raining outside, we're popping on a parent trap. It was either parent (laughs) trap or princess diaries. Okay. (laughs) What about you? How old were you? I had to have been eight. I saw it when it first came out, not in theaters, but I had a lot of girl cousins and we watched this movie and I remember liking it. I just remember being bored at some point, but I was also phased because I know I had a boy crush on Lindsay Lohan when I saw this movie. Well, yeah, she's such a cute little girl and she's got so many cool outfits. Yeah. So some things we want to talk about in this movie, the music, they play Here Comes the Sun, There She Goes, Never Let You Go. Like there's some really good music moments in this movie. And I was like, wow. Wow. You know, even the part where they're doing Here Comes the Sun, they cross Abbey Road. Yep. And then when the mom is shooting the bride and she's just having fun, you you can't help but have fun in those scenes because they're having fun. And I just thought the music was really good. It was. I felt like the music really enhanced how the characters were feeling. So, like, this is Hallie's first time seeing her mother. She's seeing what her mom does for a living. She's seeing how people react to her. And, yeah, they do add that fun song in there to show, like, that bubbling up feeling within her of, like, my mom is so cool. And she says it out loud. But it just pieces it all together so well and shows how much music affects a movie. Yeah, for sure. So I don't know about you, but I thought this was weird as a child because obviously we don't come from backgrounds that have help, if you will. 
But Annie has a butler named Martin, and then Hallie has a housekeeper named Chessie. And they are some of the coolest characters in this movie. They really are. They just genuinely love the families that they work for. And they're more like brothers and sisters to Nick and Elizabeth than anything. Yeah. But I loved this. They were great. I think Martin is hilarious. I think that Chessie is hilarious as well. Her scene in particular where she finds out that Annie is Hallie, well, just in general that the girls would switch places is so heartwarming i guess i'm not gonna say heartbreaking but it's heartwarming and you just takes every ounce of you because she's breaking down and she's trying to keep it together and it's just hilarious i love it they're just both funny characters it goes to show how much she knows this family too because the moment she came home she's like something's not right with you (laughs) it's like that typical it it, it, it's hard because it puts down dads, but it just highlights mm. how much more that women or that motherly instinct kicks in to know, like, uh-uh, this isn't right. Like, immediately, she's like, the dog's not coming by you. You're not eating any of your favorite foods. Like, she almost lets it slip, too. And yeah. she's like, it's almost as if you're... And then she goes, never mind. Yeah. Nothing. Such a good scene. It's so good. And help in general movies, I want to say, has always been just great characters. Like Joe from Princess Bride, when we were talking about yes. Princess Bride. Like, Joe is amazing. We love Joe. He was such a good character. And then I didn't watch Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but I know a lot of people love, and I've seen a lot of clips of Jeffrey, Je- Jeffrey the yes. butler in that movie, and people love him. Lurch from Adam's Family, and then, of course, Alfred from Batman. Like, just awesome characters to be butlers. I want to be a butler in a movie. Um, also, I want to mention Nigel from The Nanny because he is just awesome. It was a TV series. I don't think it would have been up your alley, but no, I it was not. loved The Nanny. But they are known. They just have those quick-witted quips to respond to their employers or whatever's going on in a situation. And you're like, yeah, the butler knows. <laughs> they know everything. For sure. So as a little girl, I really enjoyed the beginning of this movie when they go to camp. Mm. I had never been to camp. Have you? I did go to camp. I went to camp for like three or four years. It was with family members. It was never like, hey, we're going to send you off on your own. So I was with family members, you know, my cousin Ava, Katrina, Curtis, a bunch of them. And we had a blast because it was just one week, but we were off doing our own thing from our cabins. You know, we were playing games. We were doing activities. We were away from our families for the entirety of the day, but we would come back and sleep in a cabin with the family. But it was great. I loved it. So it wasn't like this camp. No, it wasn't entirely like this camp. Because this camp, they made it look so fun. It made us want to go to camp. (laughs) Like Maggie, Betty, and I would look at each other and go, so where where do we find this for our parents to send us to do this? Because constantly you see these girls are fencing. You see them going swimming. They're constantly doing different activities like all day long. Mm -hmm. And they're just hanging out, making good friendships and having a great time. But then the whole object of nature, I was like, "Mm, I don't know if that's for me. (laughs) I'm allergic to everything outside, guys. So, uh, But still, at the end of the day, this movie was highlighted camp, which I think is really cool. Because then it maybe those kids who are a little bit shy, it might make them want to go do something like this, like a day camp in the summertime. Mm -hmm. I see it as a positive. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of positives... I want to talk about some of the communication in this movie. There are little lies told throughout, like obviously these girls switch spots and then they go to their different houses or the other's houses. Different continents. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. It's very scary. But uh, the communication, they do talk to their parents eventually and they're asking these questions and the parents are very open about it. Like they're like, "Ah, why are you asking these questions? But they do give them the answers. Um, as well as like between Meredith and Annie at the time, you know, they're talking about these things that, adults usually talk about in terms of like oh you know you're number 29 of 28 you know all these women yes there's very open communication in this movie and i thought it was kind of cool even with the grandfather we'll mention later on about the grandfather and chessie knowing things and not telling them but for the most part in this movie in the present tense everything is being told and communicated very well I agree with that. And I appreciate that because I feel like that's how we talk to our children. Obviously, there are some things that you're just not ready to teach them about just yet. You know, those are where babies come from. Exactly. (laughs) Um, They have an idea, but we're we're not about to go down that that (laughs) rabbit hole just yet. But it's refreshing because at the end of the day, your children are going to grow up to adults. They are little humans like they deserve to be treated as such. You don't want to tell them a lie or contort the truth so much to the point where they embarrass themselves. Mm -hmm. So I I enjoy that aspect. And then another positive that I want to bring up is the fact that Lindsay Lohan is not a twin. 
She is not. <laughs> Did you go a little while watching this movie before you realized she wasn't a twin or was it like right away? No, I, we had no idea watching this movie. It wasn't until after, like, you know how Disney Channel Years? would do... Oh, okay, gotcha. You, no, you know how Disney Channel would do those little um, interviews and stuff about, yeah. like, the Lizzie McGuire characters and stuff like that. At one point, I think they had something regarding Lindsay Lohan on there. And that's <laughs> when all three of us looked at each other and went, whoa. Because when you're younger, you don't read the credits. No. You don't stay around long enough to know that there's only one name there for both those characters. Yeah. Uh, so, no, it wasn't until we saw a clip of, like, basically how they made this movie and how important this movie was because this is the first time that we really saw this technology yeah i mean this movie is a remake like you had said so there was an original and we haven't watched the original so we don't know how well it was done but this at the time you know this was kind of not groundbreaking because i'm sure they've done twins on screen before out of people that weren't twins it was just really cool considering we have movies like the flash that came out in 2023 and they have one character who's displayed a couple times on screen interacting with himself. And it is just so poorly done that it's incredible to think that in 1998 they kind of perfected this. And yep. then 2023, we've backstepped multiple steps. It's crazy. It's that attention to detail because... I like the passion of these people. If you do, if you guys do go back and watch the special feature, the passion that they have of like, yeah, this wasn't looking right because the door, we could tell that the door behind was yeah. open a little bit differently. So then we had to merge them together even more. Like they're just so proud of how cohesive they made it because then they brought up the point that just technology is always going people have dvds now if they pause on this scene they're gonna see our mess up so we can't afford <laughs> yeah. any imperfections like it was is very interesting yes and on disney plus is where we watch a special feature so if you want to check it out check it out on disney plus so I guess this kind of goes back to us talking about communication, but I loved the innocence of it all in this movie. Mm -hmm. All the characters genuinely want everyone to be happy. And that's why Martin, Chessie, and Grandfather help the girls with their cheekiness. But this does lead me into some negatives. Okay. How in the world has it been 11 years since these girls were born and no one has said a thing to Elizabeth, Nick, or these children? You'd think that grandfather would have been like, Lizzie, you need to tell her she's a twin. Oh, okay. You, so the, between the adults. Yes, yes. You know, like you need to be in your other child's life, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a super terrible arrangement that involves neglect from both parents. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, could you imagine if we got in a really big fight and we're like, oh, our, our girls are two years apart. But still, if we were young enough to be like, you know what, maybe Zosha will forget about Amelia. And we just separated that, that would be crazy. It's so sad to think about, yeah. I couldn't, there's no way I could go an entire decade without seeing one of my children. No, yeah, that's very crazy, and I don't, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> also, for Nick and Lizzie, how do you forget why you got divorced? Yeah, they're, they, I mean, they kind of talk about the fact that they were young when it happened, and the fact that they get married in the same, like, they're on a cruise when they get married, but they also met on this cruise. Yes. So I don't know if it was like a week-long cruise, maybe a two-week cruise. I don't know if they addressed that, if it was only a weekend, which would be even more crazy. But uh, yeah, I mean, they they seem like irresponsible young kids. So the fact that they can't remember why they broke up, I guess it shouldn't shock us. But it is shocking that you don't remember something like that. It is, because I feel like 10 years isn't long enough to forget like we're approaching 10 years of marriage and I feel like we remember close to everything. I would definitely remember why I would throw a hairdryer at your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a very important part. But I get it. They neglect that part on account for the romance purposes. But, you know, come on. I guess you got to believe that these people are going to end up back together. So you got to kind of push that aside. I feel like it's evident from the moment he sees her in the elevator because you're like, oh, yeah, he's not over her. Yeah. <laughs> so another negative that I want to bring up is the influence of this movie. I never did any of the things that they were showing on the screen. However, it could. And this is why I want to bring it up. So to make sure that the parents can't spot differences between the girls, they have to pierce one of their ears and do a different hairstyle. So cutting the hair of one of the girls and they pierce their ears themselves. They use a piece of ice and an apple and a needle and it is a funny scene, as well as the hair cutting, because she's cutting her friend's hair. We told our girls when the ear piercing scene happened that I was like, you do not do that. Do not do this. And also don't cut hair as well, because that could be scary. You don't. You, it does grow back, but... 
No, and this movie makes it look so easy. Like, you know, she's <laughs> using her fingers and stuff. So, cutting hair is not that easy, folks. No. All right. It is an art, and you will end up making yourself look like a mushroom bob. Don't do it. However, Daddy, maybe down the line, this movie did influence you because didn't you pierce your own lip? I did not pierce my own lip. I had a friend do it. Well, that's almost the same thing. She had one <laughs> friend pierce her ears and you had a friend. Pierce. So maybe it all comes back to the parent trap. Yeah, maybe it does, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> there is another part that I thought was weird, though, that both Hallie and Annie, I guess, are avid poker players, which mm. I thought was a very odd skill for an 11 year old to have. I'm 33 and still don't know how to no, play poker. We, we are not gamblers, though, at all nope. whatsoever. Vegas would be wasted on us other than food and shows. <laughs> yep. But there's a scene in the cabin where Annie looks like she's just cleaning up and beating girls left and right. And you see like the pile of bets in the middle. It's like nail polish and coins, <laughs> just, just yeah. things that, you know, your your average adolescent girl would put up. But then Hallie walks in and she's just spinning this sock full of quarters and she's like, all right, let's go. And it just glorifies child gambling, I guess, in a way. And it's just it was a really bizarre scene for me. It was. And then they up the ante with the final bet. Skinny dipping. Yes. So we didn't know what this was when we were younger. All we just know. And they do this scene very well. All you see is her shoulders and her hands are kind of crossed her chest. Yeah. And you see the bottom of her legs. So they do a very good job for this being a child, people. It takes place at night. So yes. all you see is like the silhouette of her with like moonlight. And then obviously this is an 11 year old. There was no curves. This no. wasn't done in a sexy way at all. She seems more concerned about how cold it's going to be than the fact that she's yeah. nude, which just goes to show kids man and then even kids when it's don't think about that stuff no and then even when it's done she's not even concerned with the fact that they take her clothes so she has to walk back to her cabin naked she's more concerned with like i'm gonna get this girl back yep immediately she's immediately like all right what are we doing next and then my last negative, as a kid, I used to get bored in the last 20 minutes of this movie. I just thought the pace slowed way down when they got to the camping parts. And it turns out now I get bored a lot sooner than that scene. While I love what's happening and what the writers are introducing, like new excitement parts, like the parents seeing each other for the first time, I got bored the moment that they got to the hotel. And I know it's exciting, like I would said, but it seems like the pacing is just way down and I'm not as interested as I was in the beginning of the movie or in the first half of the movie in, in general. Yeah, they could have quickened it up. I think they could have done without a scene. They, they, they made it a point to showcase that each parent saw their daughters without realizing it in different outfits yeah. before piecing it. to. And you didn't need to do that for both of them. I felt like doing that for just one parent would have been good enough. Yeah, and it's just a negative, I think, because if you're showing this to younger kids, they might just be like, I'm tapping out right now. Like, I don't even, I don't care what's going on. So, yeah, like you had mentioned earlier, Amelia made the comment of, is this movie almost over? Yeah. And this is about the time that she did it. Once they went from the hotel back to California, she was like, all right, like, let's go. And then is there any negatives that come with parental guidance, mommy? Honestly, there's not too much outside of grown-up stuff, but let's start with language as always. There is nothing unless you count OMG. Violence. The girls' fencing gets pretty spirited to the point where one of them falls into a horse trough. And then that cabin prank was definitely crazy. There were so many hazards for someone to get hurt. <laughs> yeah. So I don't recommend that. But otherwise, no. Scary. Our girls did not find a single thing scary. So let's get to grown-up stuff. There are a couple instances of smoking, whether it's a cigarette or pipe tobacco, plus some drinking. There's even a scene where Hallie takes a sip of wine, which is legal in England, to test its quality. After all, she lives on a vineyard. She, she, knows, she knows good quality from her dad. She does. There is also a part where Elizabeth gets highly intoxicated for the first time, and it is a shock to everyone else as well. But I think it's a somewhat good highlight to younger audiences how much alcohol can change and embarrass you. Mm, because yeah. you see how bad she feels. She goes to that bar and gets that nasty drink tonic to try to cure herself up. And it's like, this is a mistake, kids. Learn from it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then there is Meredith, who is highly sexualized because she is the token gold digger after Nick and his vineyard success. Martin also shows some skin, though, in his Speedo, but it's definitely funny mm -hmm. because <laughs> yeah. he's normally in a suit and tie all the time. And then once they're like, oh, come with us as a guest on vacation, not as our butler. And he starts wearing like his street clothes, if you will. Yeah. Oh, it's so he's good. like, I'm going to go take a dip. Oh, it's 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 so innocent and good, but yeah. funny. And then there is a lot of kissing and one mentioning of sex during a conversation between Hal and Meredith. That open communication, like I said. 
Which is good, but I know Maddie and I like looked at each other like really quick of like, please don't ask me what that word means. Please don't ask me what that word means. And they did not. Success. <laughs> cry factor. I didn't think so as a child. This movie did not make me cry when I was younger. But as an adult, we cried multiple times. We watched this movie with Maddie's sister and she was just laughing at us. <laughs> like at one point she was watching us instead of the movie to see if we were going to cry. Because when you're a parent and you put yourself in these shoes, it hits harder. It hits different. Anytime there was a reunion, we just got so sappy. Yeah, this movie was breaking records because I cried five times. I counted five times in this movie. I cried. I had tears coming down my face. It wasn't like sobbing. Like, <laughs> it wasn't anything like that. But it was crying five times for me in this movie. And I was like, wow. Yes, because it goes back to imagining not seeing one of your children for 10 years. And as a parent, you're just like, no. Yeah. So as Cry Factor, I'd say, yeah, if you're a parent, you're going to cry. Yep. And then as for an age recommendation, you know your kids better than we do. We're just here to recommend and give you our opinions. I did watch this movie with Zosha when she was maybe three, and she doesn't remember it at all because she wasn't interested in it. It was just too much of a grown-up movie for her. So not for three-year-olds. And then like we stated earlier, Amelia asked if this movie was almost done at some point. So not five because they just get bored with it. And I think Zosha likes it aside from the kissing, so I'd say maybe seven and up. But do remember, it slows down at some point. So Rotten Tomato critics have this movie certified fresh at 87%, which is a thumbs up. Audiences have it at a 70%, which is a thumbs middle. Let's see how it holds up in our house. Zosha, do you give the parent trap a thumbs up, a thumbs middle, or a thumbs down? Thumbs middle. Okay, thumbs middle. Amelia, what do you give this? Thumbs middle. There was too much kissing. Oh, too much kissing. Okay. Mommy? I'm going to give this movie a thumbs up. I loved it as a child. I still enjoy it as an adult for different reasons now. And it's something that you can put on at any time, and I'm guaranteed to watch it. Okay. What about you, Daddy? I'm going to give this movie a thumbs middle. It's slightly pointing up. I did enjoy it. But like I said, it does have a few parts that I'm just like, eh, let's finish this movie now. Fair enough. And if any of you would like to add The Parent Trap to your movie night list, it is currently streaming on Disney Plus and Fubo or available across platforms. And after watching, let us know if you give it thumbs up, thumbs middle, or thumbs down. And when you want to let us know what you think about the movie, please find us on social media. We like to post pictures of us on our movie nights, letting you know what snacks and sweets we're eating. We post a dad joke as well as a sneak peek clip theme to the episode coming out that week. It's a fun place to hang out. Our Facebook is It's Movie Night, and our Instagram is It's Movie Night Pod. Thank you for listening. Join us next week for another movie night. Bye. Bye.